Welcome to Pitmaster, an old Virginia smoke podcast. I'm your host, Luke Darnell. It's Fergalicious time, baby. Richard Fergala is the Pitmaster of Fergalicious Barbecue out of Kansas City. He's been on multiple TV shows, won many contests, and has recently opened a barbecue store called the Kansas City Grilling Company. If you know Fergie, he's high energy, as is this podcast. Enjoy the show. Well, we have the esteemed pleasure today of being here with Mr. Richard Fergala, Fergalicious Barbecue. How you doing, baby? I'm good, man. I'm good. Yeah, you've been killing it. You've been traveling all around. Just got back from Mississippi. That's cool stuff. Yeah, you know, uh, taking a little bit different approach. Not, I'm still competing, but just not competing as much. Trying to get in some more videos and filming and coll- collabs and doing stuff like that. So Malcolm and I were supposed to do this last year. COVID kind of kind of killed that trip. So here we are a year later and we had a chance to do it. So we went down there and, and rocked it out. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. But I, I, re- I recall how we first met, though, which is a funny story. Yeah. So Kim and I were driving to, I think it was Cincinnati, Holy Smokes contest, Yep. which turned out being a, just an amazing contest. We haven't made it back there, but. It's one that we look at every year and there's something always gets in the way and I don't have any charcoal. (laughs) So I started looking, looking at a team list. I'm like, who's there that might have charcoal. And I see Fergalicious and I'm like, that guy might have charcoal. So I'm sending Facebook messages and, and uh, you're like, no man, I don't have any charcoal. And we ended up hanging out all that weekend. It was a good time. Well, if you remember right, Cook's meeting at that contest was the Jack announcement, the Jack draw. What's that? What's the jack? I know exactly, right? Um, <laughs> and it, 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 what's even more so that makes that story even more uh, pertinent to that is I think we had like five or six bungs in that draw that day. Yeah. And we were at Cook's meeting and I wasn't even paying attention to the Cook's meeting at all. And we we're all sitting there like uh, Gray Street and you get, you were all sitting there looking at these and, and, uh, and we didn't get the draw because I'm pretty sure a team that got the draw from Kansas um, had only cooked one contest that year and won it and they got the draw. And I think we, Cincinnati, we were on like number, that was like number 35 for us. After that, I said, you know what, Jeremy, let's just go to, let's go to Skyline and get some, some chili spaghetti, <laughs> chili dogs. And I remember walking by you and you go, Hey man, will you pick me up some too or bring it back? And so we came back and brought you some. Brought you That's some right. Skyline. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yep. Uh, cook's meeting. That was one of the most miserable cook me- cook's meetings of all time. Yes, sir. Get- the guys up there talking and everybody is literally staring at their phone hitting refresh. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then half, the, half the room was happy and half the room was not happy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We were one of those not happy teams. And then you had one of your tires, your tires went bad and, and we had to help change it out. On That's your right. I forgot yeah. about that too. Yep. Yeah. That was a fun day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Still you got some great- calls too. Yeah, we did. I think we won chicken that day, and it was yep. a it was a really good contest, really good contest. Well, let's get into some of these questions here. I'm really excited to have you on here because uh, I've got to cook with you a few times since then, and uh, we've always had a great time. Yeah. You're always full of energy. I don't know how or where you get it from, but it's, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> uh, but one of the things that, that I've uh, always marveled at with you is that you are very confident pit master where does that confidence come from i'll tell you i, I had uh i have two great parents uh, i lost my dad in 2016 to cancer but my parents always instilled in me that um it's kind of cliche-ish but you know you, if you put your mind to it you can accomplish anything my mom was a driving force behind that behind that psychological approach you know and and she's always kind of been that way and and um and I'll, and I'll be honest with you, the other piece was uh, growing up as a wrestler, and I had a great coach. I just had, I when I saw somebody that believed in me that much, it just made me believe in myself even more. And uh, as I went through, co- as I went through wrestling and went through coaching and won a national title as a head college coach and those kind of things, as my dad used to always say, um, you know, I'm not cocky, I'm just confident. And and that's, that's always, that's, I've taken that approach into barbecue. I'm just, I work hard. I work really hard at what I do. And Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm just very confident in in what I what I can what I can accomplish, and that's that's kind of where it comes from. 
Yeah. And that's a great mindset, you know, and there's, but there's a lot of pit masters out there who struggle with this. So what advice would you give to somebody to improve their confidence? That's an excellent question because I get asked that question at my comp competition classes all the time. I think it goes back to that word consistency that we all, that we all kind of throw around when it comes to competition barbecue and how are you so successful all the time? And, 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 and it, you have to be confident in what you're doing. And I think that, and like I, some of my other friends, like David Qualls and I have had these conversations about the psychology of competition barbecue, you know, because it is a huge, it's no different than the psychology of coaching or an, a, an athlete or any of those kind of things. What, the first thing you have to do is not worry about who you're cooking against. When you roll into a contest and, or you see a contest list and you see all these really good teams, you know, you have to be not affected by that because obviously it's what you're cooking, not what you, you control what you're cooking, not what they're cooking. And then you just have to be confident in your timeline and your flavor profile and, and your abilities to reach that tenderness that, that achieves success on the, on the circuit. And because if you go into a contest and you're not confident, I mean, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to miss things. You're going to be offbeat. I think that's a really, really important thing that nobody really talks about competition barbecue. Yeah. And it's a lesson that I was taught because I used to do that exact thing. I would look and say, Oh, wow, this person's here. This person's here one of my mentors was like, look, if you don't think that you're going to win that contest, then you're not going to win that contest. Right. And I was actually having a conversation with a very good friend of mine this week. And I told him, I said, look, you know, you're going into that and you're, you just told me that there's 11 teams that could win it. You didn't list yourself. (laughs) Like you got to fix that. You have to go in there and have the confidence to, to do what you're going to do. It's one of those things, especially this weekend, we were around a couple of teams that were newer and I'm going to call her out right now. Her name was, her team name is darling Nikki barbecue. <laughs> and we met them as soon as we got to the contest. I said, first of all, is that your, I'm assuming your name is Nikki. And second of all, is that from the Prince song? And she's like, absolutely. Yeah. And it was her first contest and she cooked ribs Friday night single meat contest, cooked backyard on uh, Saturday, ribs and chicken, judged single meat rib contest Saturday night, and then cooked master series on Sunday. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. She threw she threw her entire everything into barbecue. And that was her first time ever? First time ever. Oh, and wow. And got two calls in the backyard competition, two top tens. And uh, I told her I was super proud of her, you know, like yeah. she sat there, and she, but she took feedback, you know, she let us try her rib and, you know, we told her what was wrong with it and how right. she needed to change it. Next day, completely different rib, completely different experience. And uh, I could just tell the confidence that she had in her ability. And some of that's sometimes you can't teach that, you know what I mean? Oh, it's, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and what you did by helping her. I mean, that's another, that's like another really big thing for me is if I'm at a contest and and I'm next to a team that's uh, just beginning or it's their second or third contest, man, I will, I will lay out the red carpet for that team. And if they need something, if I've got it, I'll give it to them. If they need advice, I give it to them. Um, I typically won't give it to them unless they ask though. I mean, cause I don't want to seem like, sure. I'm, you know, trying to tell them how to do their, and, and I want them to be able to experience a KCBS competition. That's what they're there for, you know? I love helping other teams. That's why, obviously why I teach classes. And, uh, but yeah, I'm back to that, that question, you know, it's just all about that confidence and believing in yourself. And if you get there and you have that confidence, you're not nervous. you don't, you're not kind of, you're not running around like, like, you know, you don't know what's happening next. You're just kind of chill. You relax. You're having a good time. Kind of like when you and I are at contests, you know, we're just able to just sit back and chill. Cause we, we know our pits are doing our job or doing their job and, we know, we know when business time is there and when fun time is there. And I think when you're a beginning pit master, you haven't learned those things yet. So once you, once you do, you know, then you kind of are able to kind of be more consistent and confident. You can plan, you can plan your day around it. You know, yeah. yeah. It, unfortunately, my new program, the 922 shot, I'm busy. I can't, yeah. <laughs> you know, I just, I, I've tried I to do it. I can't do it. I just yeah. can't be there. So. Uh, I try and stick to the 10, 10 o'clock lucky beer and make, yeah. make that work. So, <laughs> well, I, I host the nine twenty two shot and it's a horrible time for me because I'm usually, <laughs> my money muscles are usually temping out at that time and it's just horrible time, but I make it work. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
One of the things that a lot of people talk about on these programs is successes. I like to talk about failures because I think those are a great teaching moment. Do you have a favorite failure of yours, something that, you know, really went wrong for you that really you learned from moving forward? Oh, man, I, I'm sure I got many, 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 many of those. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, I don't know. I mean, I think, uh, you know, I think I think one of the things that probably sticks out in my mind a lot is I've been fortunate enough to be on a couple TV shows. And I, I kind of I kind of wish that those things would have happened later in my career because they happened earlier when I was still kind of wet behind the ears and didn't have I didn't have that confidence quite yet. You know, I'm, I'm a competitor and I didn't win either one of those shows. And I know that they in the in the real barbecue world, it's completely different than what, what we're doing on TV, but that really matters. But uh, as a competitor, I, I hate losing, man. And so, <laughs> um, you know, I think about going on those shows and, you know, not following through with what I was going to do. And but at the end, it, I might have failed, but I feel like it kind of served as a, cat, a catapult for me into into things that were successful um, because I learned from it. You know what I mean? And I think that's the when you bring up failures, I mean, as a wrestler, as a coach. And as a pit master, or even as a husband or a father, you know, <clears throat> those failures have to be lessons. And if you, right. if you don't learn from them, then, then they were pointless failures. They were just, that's all they were, were failures. And so yeah. I try to learn from all of those. I mean, you know, when, when I brought up wrestling earlier, I mean, that's, if I lost to somebody, the next time I wrestled you, I, I didn't plan on losing twice. And so that means I went back to the drawing board. I worked harder. I tried to figure out things that I did wrong and how can I not lose this next time? So that's kind of how I approach that. You mentioned wrestling a couple of times and I know that you used to be a teacher as well. Yeah. Yeah. How, how has your career outside of barbecue prepared you to be a better pit master on the competition trail? Well, you know, going back to my parents, I mean, I think they did a very good job of teaching me how to, um, as you mentioned, my energy level earlier, I'm 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 pretty chatty. Um, <laughs> I, I I love to talk to people, man. I, I love meeting people. I love talking to them. I love hanging out with them. I you know I love learning about things about them, telling them things about myself, just interacting with humans, you know. And so in barbecue, I think I, I do that a lot. But I think being a teacher, you have to be able to have those elements. You have to be able to work with a, a large staff of teachers, administration, parents, kids you know, uh, athletes, all those different things. And so, you know, I had to get up in front of people a lot as a teacher. I had to get up and speak a lot in front of sometimes a thousand people. And, and so I think transitioning that into barbecue or doing TV or, or teaching barbecue classes or do the things we do on the barbecue league or things like this, I'm in my comfort zone. It's like, so that element of what we do, which in the barbecue world has become very publicized and, 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 big to people that that part just kind of comes as second nature to me because I'm used to doing that from teaching and coaching and being in, yeah. in front of crowds and, you know, having to perform, you know, I mean, even as an athlete, you know, I, I could, I could be in a gym that's got two or 3000 people in it. And I'm, I, I, I excel off of that, that crowd. Like if I'm at a, if I'm at, when I was at the Chiefs at the Super Bowl last year, when the Chiefs won and I, we were there, I mean, you hear that crowd roar. I, I mean, I get excited. The hair stands up on the back of my neck. That's how I feel at a barbecue contest during turn ins. Like you, like you and Kim are when you got the, you got the nineties, the nineties gangster rap going in the background. <laughs> we figured that out in Cincinnati. We got that same vibe going. And so, so I'm in my groove. I, I feel good. I'm confident. And uh, I'm just ready to, to rock it. That's awesome. And that's, what's fun. What's a lot of fun cooking when we're next to you and, you know, just having a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Let's switch gears a little bit and get into some lighter subject matter, but important subject matter, because I know this is something, this is something that you are passionate about <laughs> and that's, and that's gear and investments and stuff, things that you, that help you with your cook. What is one of the best investments that you've made in competition barbecue? My smoker. I mean, I, I, I tell people that at my store just about every, every, every other day. I mean, the Myron Mixon G33 that we've, that I've cooked on for the last six years. I mean, couldn't, it couldn't, I couldn't have invested in a better piece of equipment for what I do. It's, it's helped me be very successful. It's helped me uh, not just be successful in competition, but in catering and 
just all different kinds of things like that. And I mean, if you're going to be a pit master, I, I think the number one thing you got to have that you're confident in is your pit. I mean, I love it. And, and you got to know your pit. You know, that's exactly. a big deal. Yeah, you got to know it. You got yeah. you got to have a relationship with your pit. <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's uh and and we you and I we joke about that, but we talk I talk about that to people in my classes and store when I'm on the road and and some people that don't quite understand that yet that it's kind of like you're getting to know each other and and you got to figure out what what that pit's going to do and what it's not going to do or what it can do and what can't it can't do and what kind of color it puts on is it all those different things, you know, it's not just lighting a fire and grilling, you know, it's uh Right. There's a whole science behind it. So smokers are expensive. Very but much. There's some stuff that's cheaper. So what purchase of a hundred dollars or less has most positively impacted your barbecue life? You can't say thermopen because everybody says thermopen. <laughs> <laughs> Thermopens are great. They should probably sponsor this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is something something that people could go out and get right now? Something that you think might be unique to you that that is rather cheap and that just really helps you out. I can think of I can think of three unique things that Perfect. two of them two of them are very unique that I use that we brought into the store when we opened up. One of them is a spritzer that we use and uh, we brought it into the store when we opened up and I love this thing. It's it's I'm not doing, you know, this kind of stuff. It's it's very easy to use. It's like a sprayer almost. And probably the best thing that I ever invested in that's under hundred dollars is my knife sharpener. It's a, uh, it's called a Dick's rapid steel. It's like the, you know, it's got like the, and you run your knife through it, but it's handheld. Yeah. I freaking like love the V shaped thing. Yeah. 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 It's kind of, and it's got spring quick. loaded. It's like spring yeah. loaded. And so, um, and, and we have those in the store and I've got one in my trailer. I got one here at the house. I got one at the store. And when I break those out for a class and I'm just running a knife through it real quick, the edge it puts on. So it makes all my cuts clean. You know, everything is, and, and, you know, you don't, well, you see more people with them now just because, you know, we it's promoted more now, but you know, when I first got one, I hadn't seen them very often. And, and I think that's like 70 bucks. So it's, and it's very useful. So. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I love those type of things and learning. I think <laughs> that's one of the goals of this podcast is to have some like little things like that, that, you know, somebody can go and spend, you know, under a hundred bucks and really change, change their stuff, man. Like you just mentioned it, like having clean cuts. So important. Oh, big time, big time. I mean, if you don't have, if you don't have sharp knives, I mean, everything's going to be different and it's noticeable. Like I can look at people's turn in boxes that they like to share with me and ask my opinion on them. And I can, I can immediately tell whether their knife is sharp or not. I mean, I can just tell because of their lines. You know, I mean, my family and I, we like to watch this show Ink Masters about tattooing and everything. And they're always talking about their outline and their straight lines and everything. I think in barbecue, it's, you know, how, how precision are you with your cuts and how clean are you making like your ribs, for example, how clean does that look in the box, you know? And I think that comes down to having a a really good sharp knife. And if you don't have that, if you're just using something that you got at Walmart or that's in your kitchen drawer, you know, you're probably butchering it a little bit. Yeah. You can, I made that mistake this weekend. I <laughs> I put a knife onto a money muscle and I went and it tore the top of it. And I went, you yeah. dipshit. What did you just do? And I basically tossed it to the side and grabbed the one that I knew I'd sharpened in the morning. Yeah. And Kim was like, what did you do? And I'm like, ah, stupid. Made it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just stupid. Well, I'll tell uh, you, I'll tell you another piece of equipment. And I think you actually use one. Um, when I was down this weekend in Mississippi, the the guys down there were using it. And do you have one of those thumb grinders? Oh yeah, yeah. So I don't have one. I have eight. You have eight. <laughs> I have and eight thumb grinders. Yeah, these guys were these guys were using that guy right there. Uh huh. Is that what yeah. you got? Yep. Yeah, I have eight of them. Yeah, we have four. We keep four in the trailer and four in the J three. Yeah, and I had, I had seen them before, um, but I never got to actually use one because I never I don't. I don't really do like a finishing type dust. Um, but when I use this one, I was like, whoa, this thing is cool. So uh, this Friday, they'll be in our store. <laughs> you can get super accurate with your, one of the things I'm super sensitive to about putting on meat is salt. And, you know, we use that to finish a couple of meats. And it's like, I mean, you can just touch that grinder and just get yeah. a little tiny bit of salt. And yeah. it's, uh, yeah. I was impressed I, by it. Yeah. 
whenever I whenever I do my episode of this podcast, <laughs> it's, that's gonna that'll probably be my thing under hundred bucks. But now I got to change it because <laughs> you brought it up. <laughs> I just so, thought they were cool, and I remember seeing you use one once. So, yeah, what? Um, yeah, you probably saw me use it at Big Twelve, I'd imagine. Yeah, I think uh, that's probably where I saw it. Yeah, do you use a lot of technology in your uh, cook? No, I mean I've got I use a barbecue guru, but I don't use the CyberQ. I just I just use the regular DigiQ three. Yeah, and uh, and I mean that's really it. Um, I don't uh, aside from my my phone, Spotify playing my music in my trailer. Um, I don't, I don't use any other type of technology except for my thermopin or that's about it. That's cool. It's all, it's all right here in these. <laughs> 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 Let's talk about some people in barbecue. I love it. Who has impacted your life the most in competition barbecue? Man, that's a, that's a tough one. We've met it so is. many people. We've met so many great people, man. I don't even know how I could put it on just one person, but I'll tell you, you know, it's, there's a, there's a lot of great pit masters out there. I mean, the the obvious ones that people talk about, Travis, Darren, um, Tim Grant, uh, you know, uh, Brad, Tim. I mean, I, I mean, I could go on and on and on. And I, I think the one unique thing about all of those guys is they keep the drive in me. So like, as good as they are, I, I want to strive to be, I want to, I want to strive to beat them. And so, um, and I know everybody probably says that in some form or fashion, but I guess in my mind, I, I mean, it's like a genuine, like that's, I, I want to be, I, I, I want Fergalicious to be at that level as well. And right. um, so it's, it's kind of like they serve as a catalyst of, as a push, you know, if I'm at a contest with them, that's, that's a goal of mine is to, it's always a goal to win. Like when I go into a contest, I always go there expecting to win. Um, it doesn't always work out that way, but it's, if you didn't have anybody there better than you to push you, I don't think I'd ever keep going. Like I'm going, you know what I mean? It's, uh, right. we've been impacted. I, I've been impacted by a lot of people. I've been impacted by you. I've been impacted by, you know, all those guys I mentioned. It's, uh, when you're, when you're around a lot of great, I mean, I was just impacted this weekend, just me and Malcolm and Craig hanging out for the weekend. I mean, no matter what level you you've achieved and how, and how many GCs you want or, or how successful you've been, you can spend two days with guys and walk out of there with like a dozen more things that you just learned. You know what I mean? It's like um, me and Malcolm and Craig, you know, Saturday, we were all just learning from each other. And, you, you know, so when I go on these trips, you know, some people are like, oh, so you just flew down there just to film videos. I'm like, oh, I got way more than that out of it when I went down. Absolutely. There. We all, learn, you know, Malcolm has a store now. And so he's he's asking me about the retail business and barbecue business and all that stuff. And I'm learning tricks from him and he's learning tricks from me. And it's just, it, it was a huge learning. It's it, I, I learn every time I'm around barbecue people, man. It's. I tell people that all the time. I people always ask like, how do you get better? How do you learn? And I'm like, be nice, be sociable. Uh, don't just go up to somebody and say, Hey, how do you do something? If you sit there long enough and just take it all in and be nice and courteous, you're going to learn so much. Oh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. It, yeah. It, 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 all you have to do is listen, just be a sponge. That's all you have to do. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's, uh, <clears throat> I feel like I've been around enough awesome pit masters, both cooking wise and just people wise to, to develop a hybrid, if you will, of all of them together. You know what I mean? Like just, just trying to be the best Ferg that I can be and do the best at it that I can every time I go cook. The best Ferg you can be. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I yeah. can't help but bring it up because you brought up that you and your family watch a lot of, watch a tattoo show. You recently got some new ink, didn't you? Yes, sir. <laughs> and the wife got some new ink too, I think. She did. Mark, you, you back there? Oh, I think she's outside with the dogs. The Mrs. Fergalicious. Mrs. Fergalicious across her arm right here. Yeah. Yeah. How you yeah, ever we were in Vegas. Yeah, we were in Vegas. <laughs> How you ever convinced the woman to put that on her body, I'll never know. It was to- it was it was totally her idea. Totally her idea. So <laughs> yep. it was either she was either going to get uh, one of our dogs paw print or that and she went with that so 
Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. So what was the biggest turning point in your life as a pit master? I would probably, I would probably have to say, uh, being on barbecue pit masters because it's the, it's the one time since I started doing this barbecue stuff where everything just changed overnight and happened so quickly. And we were, we were just talking about it this weekend too, about those kind of things. And, you know, here we, here we were just these kind of new dudes on the block and, and happened to get lucky and get on the show. And, and after that came out, it was like, everything just went like this. I mean, fast, yep. you know, I try to take advantage of it as much as I could, as far as, you know, just capitalizing on that PR, like I would hope anybody would, if they were in that situation and, uh, and just built a, built a business off of it, man. I mean, it's, and it right. also, it, it also kind of inspired me to get more serious with it. You know, I mean, it's, uh, I was like, wow, this is, this is awesome. This is a lot, this is a blast, you know? And, and, uh, <laughs> Um, I want to keep doing it. I want to keep doing it. So I, I, I think that was definitely in 2014 after that show aired, my whole life changed. So, and I didn't That's even great. win. I didn't even win. You know, I mean, <laughs> you look at Joe, Joe won, won our episode, me and Mike were the losers. And well, even Mike, I mean, you just take us three from our show and think about how all three of our lives have changed since that show aired. And all we did was just a barbecue TV show. And now, Mike's got, you know, freaking, I don't know how many barbecue joints and Joe's got his and very successful and a great competition cook. And I've got my rub sold worldwide and have a barbecue store. And I get to talk to guys like you on podcasts. And, <laughs> you know I mean, like, you know, it just, it, it just changed everything. Yeah. Barbecue people are probably the most superstitious people in the world. Do you have any habits and rituals or routines that you have to do during competitions? I have a couple. I have a couple. <laughs> First of all, you've met you've met all three of our mascots, Petunia, Hamilton, and Homie the Nomi. So they are they are always on top of the smoker. They go everywhere. Uh, Petunia, she's getting kind of old. She's been broke a couple times. She she lost an ear in Georgia when we were down there cooking that that triple. And Hamilton, he's a little dirty. And and uh, Homie the Nomi's just one of those guys that doesn't care who you are, you know, because um, he you've got the you know it, it, anyway. That, that's that that's those are big things um and uh, on saturdays i never drink any alcohol until after the 922 so a lot of my friends always invite me over for the 707 but i don't go to that because at the 922 that's when i'm that's when i feel like i get to tell everybody good luck i get to say hi to everybody high five everybody it's my favorite time of the contest and as soon as those shots go down then it's then it's go mode then it's the way then we're go time so I don't ever, people offer me drinks before that. And I always turn them down because I don't ever change that. I don't ever change that. And then, you know, obviously my routine, I don't, I don't detour from what I do. I mean, it's, it's regimented. I do the same thing every weekend and that's why I stay consistent. And I just, I just don't, I just don't get away from that. You, you mentioned music earlier. Uh, you're definitely a music guy while you're cooking. Yeah. Oh, 100%. I know in Cincinnati that year, it was kind of like, it's kind of like we were at a hip hop concert because your trailer and our trailer was right next to each other's and we could hear both each other's speakers. And I was like, I was like, I like, I like Luke and Kim even better now because I can hear their song. And I, I actually like the song they're playing better than what we got on right now. <laughs> That's not always the case. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We got a couple of looks this weekend. People were like, what in the hell is going on in there? And we're like, it's the same 200 songs every every Saturday. It's yeah, uh that's happened to us before too. Yeah, it's we keep that playlist is pretty stringent. Uh it gets updated every four contests and uh we just listen for new songs, we listen for things that that maybe you're overplayed and yeah, it's it's the most important thing for us. <laughs> yeah, it it's what hypes me up, man. It's no different than when I was wrestling and I had headphones in and I was just, you know, if I was getting warmed up or, or coaching and we're playing music in between matches, I mean, that's my, if I, if I'm gloved up and I'm like making a chicken box and a song comes on, that's not at my level. I mean, I got to have my mom or whoever is there cooking with me, change it to get it, to get it to ramp up, you know, to get it something that's, cause that's when I get, that's when I get in my flow, man. I, if, if I'm, if I'm not in my flow, then, you know, I, I I don't always feel as confident about my cook. So, you know, I like to be in that flow. So one of the things that you've done is you've put forth your time to serve as a KCBS board member. What is your 
future or vision for the competition barbecue world? Well, I'll tell you that the, the very first thing that I wanted to impact coming in as a board member was to somehow reorganize or restructure or improve whatever you want to call it, how KCBS is judged. And I was very forthright about that coming in, that that was one thing that I wanted to impact because it, it's centered around education. And that's kind of, that's my, that's my area. You know what I mean? And so, yeah. And, and I, and I strongly believe that when you have a group of people like a board, everybody's got strengths and, and I think you gotta, you gotta play to those strengths of those people and utilize them in the arena that they're good at. And so, you know, that's, that's kind of where, and hopefully we'll get something done before I leave. Um, and I think the other thing too is, and, and we talk about this a lot is just taking KCBS barbecue to another level as far as fan engagement, um, you know, getting people more involved. That's why I liked uh, like our second season of the barbecue league when we were all in the 10 by 10 tents right next to each other and everything mm-hmm. was broadcast live and we got to hear the results after each meet and there were people there. I thought that that was the coolest way to do competition barbecue. I just think that is so cool. Um, and the part that really, really hooked me on that was, um, when we were in Springfield, when we did that contest in Springfield, Missouri, um, (laughs) and they picked, they picked me to do the brisket part. And so during my brisket box building, you know, I've got the camera on me and then I got like 50 people standing right there in front of the tent and they're just, they're just locked in on this brisket. Right. And I'm like, how can you beat this right here? I mean, people are getting to watch it firsthand. We're not in our trailers hiding away and, and, you know, doing our thing. We're out here in the public. It's like a show. And I just, I think when we gave it that little, when barbecue got a little look at that, a little glimpse of that kind of thing. Yeah. I think everything, I think everything changed after that. And then COVID hit and kind of everybody had to kind of reroute what their visions were and, and do different things, obviously. But, um, I just think those kind of things, man, more fan friendly, getting people involved, letting them see what's happening. And I know that, I know that's kind of happening like on here on the computers and stuff like that. But I mean, when yeah. if you if you've never got to see it in action in, in person, I mean, it's pretty cool to watch. I mean, you know, I mean, if, if I'm a fan of barbecue and I want to watch that, that'd be cool to do. So. That's cool. And I think you're right. You know, there has to be some sort of level of involvement. Um you know, I, and I enjoyed that contest too, just being out there in the open. Yeah. I think it's fair to say that you did have your trailer there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I did. You yes, did. because I was going to another contest after that. Yeah, it's always, it's always chatting my ass a little bit. I'm like, look at this guy. And he comes up here in boxes in his tent. This is amazing. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. That was fun. We cooked in that parking lot outside of basically Patrick's Roadhouse. It was uh, something. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was. Yeah, I slept in that parking lot that night, in that trailer. Nope. Well, you- no chance I would have ever done that. <laughs> yep. You guys are all sleeping in hotel beds. I was sleeping in my trailer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, so before we get into the rapid fire questions, one of the best things, one of the reasons I like cooking out in the Midwest a lot is there's a lot more gamesmanship and messing with people. How important is psych- psychological warfare to to you? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's like an actual tactic that I use when I go to a contest, but when when the opportunities present themselves, <laughs> I like to take advantage of them. You know, but what's crazy is everybody that I do that with, they're my friends anyway, so they'll they'll try to do it back as well. And we just have, I think that's one of the coolest things about our store and having our teams that we sponsor is when we're at contests with our other teams, it's, it's fun to walk around and not only hang out with them, but then all of us kind of walk around and meet other teams and say hi. And then we kind of mess with each other and have friendly banter. And um, I mean, if I didn't have that at a contest, why would I even go, you know, because that's like, that's part of the best part. And, you know, I mean, yeah, I'm there to compete and I'm there to win, but if, if I didn't get to do any of that part, like if I didn't get to come to, like when I was in Cincinnati, if I didn't get to hang out with you and Kim next door, I don't know if I would have had as much fun, but you know, right. I was walking around that contest and introducing myself to people. And, you know, we talk a little trash and, and everybody laughs and we have a good time and we have some adult beverages. And I mean, that part right there is probably the best thing about KCBS competition barbecue is just the people and hanging out, man. I just, 
I can't get enough of it. It's like, it's like a drug. Oh, I agree. I agree. And it's one of the things that Kim and I have really been focusing on, particularly last year and this year is uh, getting out and meeting some different people and, yeah. uh, you know, just really trying to be accessible and, and just, there's, there's tons of people out there that we haven't met yet. And that's one of the reasons that we love traveling around the country and doing that, you know, it's, it's, I would, I've, I've got to meet so many great people. That's really been the best part about barbecue. It, it is. When we travel for non barbecue events and we go to another town, it doesn't matter where I go. I know somebody in barbecue, you know, and yeah. it's, and, and how that, and how that helps is maybe they have a restaurant and they invite us over for dinner or, you know, maybe they, you know, they know something in town and, and we all hook up. I mean, it's, you know, there's always somebody there that I know, um, no matter where we're traveling to, that we can always hang out and say hi to, or, I mean, how can you beat that? Getting to travel around the country and meet all these people and have all these friends. Right. Well, let's get into the dirty nitty gritty questions here, buddy. This is my favorite part. Oh, the, boy. Rapid, the rapid fire. I suck at these, by the way. I suck at these. There's no, you have never been at a loss for words for, and I, I know don't think it's, it's <laughs> pressure. It's pressure. <laughs> it's not going to start right now. You thrive under pressure. <laughs> Come on. All right. I'm going to start you off with the hardest one first too. Oh, awesome. What do you see about barbecue on social media that upsets or bothers you? Squeezing brisket fat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to start a campaign that says hashtag stop the squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That juice, I don't know, would be, juice would I, be better inside than out. Yeah. I don't know why, why it bothers me. It, I, I don't know. Maybe I guess it's because it's, it's, it's a layer of fat that goes between the point and the flat. And when people squeeze it, it it's supposed to come off as if it's coming out of the meat, but it's just the fat in between the two meats. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, it, it doesn't bother me to where I sit there and get upset. I'm just like, what are they doing? Right. <laughs> yeah. I, it, you know what? It bothers me too. And I didn't know that until you said that. <laughs> great. Great. Now, now I got Luke mad at people now too. Yeah. Just, yeah, let's stop that. <laughs> um, what's one of your favorite pre, during and post competition meals? Oh, Dairy Queen. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Especially post, especially after contest. I don't eat barbecue, man. What do you get? I always get the, uh, I get a brownie and chocolate chip cookie dough blizzard. Oh, that sounds good. And it's, oh man, like <laughs> I can't ask for anything better than that after a barbecue contest. I don't really have, I don't really have a pre and during because I don't really eat during a contest. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like it depends on where we're at whether I'll, you. you know whether i'll eat something that's like local to that local if we traveled around or something like that but all after it's always dairy queen that's awesome what is your favorite present that you like to give to people me no i'm just kidding <laughs> um <laughs> you know i'd have to say oh, this is gonna sound so corny man <laughs> it's gonna sound stupid man i i like I, I like i like giving people knowledge man you know, I mean, I guess that's the teacher in me, dude. You know, I mean, I feel like sharing with people is, it makes people happy. You know what I mean? It like, they, they like to interact. They like to find out. I mean, I get asked that every day, you know, it's like, I've got a question for you. You know, everybody's always got that for me every day. And I just, I love being able to answer it. You know, I love being able to help them out. And when they leave my contest side or leave my store, you know, they, they're always like, oh man, thanks. I, you know, th thanks for all that information. And and yeah. I guess, I mean, it, it just sounds kind of corny, but it's, I feel like the gift of knowledge is a, is a pretty cool thing. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. What do you think are the biggest misconceptions about you? Oh man, you're going to get, <laughs> you're, you're going to take me down that road, Luke. It's one of the rapid fire questions for, I can't help it. Oh, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I can say it, it's not a super short answer, but I can tell you that for a lot of years, there's a big misconception of my personality. And a lot of times my people might think I'm brash or, or off-putting or arrogant. And I'm, I'm real, I'm, I'm really not those things. I'm just very, I'm confident. I'm fast moving. I, I work hard. I don't, I'm very, I'm, I'm pushy. I, 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 I embrace all these, I embrace all of it. Um, 
You're high I, energy. You're, I'm high energy. I'm high energy. You're high energy. And, Always. Uh, and all of those things have helped me be successful, you know, and sometimes it rubs some people the wrong way. And it's, uh, you know, I've, I've kind of had to learn to live with that. It is what it is. But um, on the other side of that, I try to be present for people and help them and do as yeah. much as I can for people all the time. So high energy. I've never seen you drag an ass. I've <laughs> never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it happened. See. Trust me. <laughs> all right. There's only two left. Okay. If you could have a gigantic billboard anywhere with anything on it, getting a message out to millions or billions, what would it say and why? Oh, man. <laughs> man, that's a tough one, Luke. I thought, you, I thought you said the first one was the hardest one. No, this is, that was an easy one compared to this one. This is, yeah, off the cuff for... <laughs> man, I... I I'd, I don't know. I'd have to say, uh, I'd probably say live. Yeah, that's a good one. You know, and uh, and what I mean by that is, you know, spend more time with your family. Um, have fun while you're here. You know, do things. Enjoy life. And I say those things because I haven't always been that great at it. And uh, um, and I'm always trying to do better at that. And, uh, you know, if I can if I can say that message to that many people, you know, do you know do these things that make you happy be with your family and 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 you can play too but you gotta um you gotta make sure that happens right on right on last one what is an unusual habit or absurd thing that you love oh man something yeah that's completely goofy there's Our gotta friends? be something there's gotta I'm, be something i was gonna try to i was gonna try to phone the wife see if she could help me with that one well, I mean, it's clear that I love tattoos. I, and some people think they're absurd, including my mother. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and she didn't even want to come into the tattoo parlor when I was getting this one. She's like, I don't want to watch you get that done. Um, but I, I love them. And, uh, you know, people think they're weird, but they're more socially accepted now. But, man, I don't know, Luke. See, that's one of those things where I, I'm, I guarantee I do I do like something and do something probably that's completely absurd, but I can't think of what it is. Um <laughs> I don't That's know, fine. man. Yeah, I can't. I can't think of. I can't think of something. That's all good, box. man. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's your what's your absurd thing? I buy people underwear. I mean, there's no secret of that. You it's buy weird. people underwear? Oh my god, MeUndies.com. I love that underwear. And like, if somebody does something nice for me, I usually send them a pair of underwear. <laughs> oh man, that is great. Yeah, I sent uh, Fred Robles a pair of underwear. And his wife was like, what is going on? Like, <laughs> why are you sending my husband underwear? And I was like, <laughs> they're the best underwear in the world. It's what I did. Well, now I got to look them up, dude. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll get you a pair. You are oh, carrying man. my sauce now. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am, which is very good, by the way. Have you tried it? Yeah. I, and I'm a mustard guy, man. I'm a mustard okay. guy. So I wasn't quite sure how the mustard and the vinegar was going to play, but but it was good, man. It was it was good. It, and what I what I like more about it is it's different. It's like yeah. it's really different from anything else on the shelf. And we that's what we were trying to go for, not to not to advertise my sauce on your oh, podcast. Man. People were like, why didn't you come out with a red sauce? I'm like, because there's so many great red sauces out there in the world. And this is a sauce I've had the recipe for 10 years. Yeah. And uh COVID came along and I was like, you know what? Let me just see what it would take to get this bottled. So, and we did it. You know, we're going to do some fun stuff coming up here in May around the sauce. So, everybody cool. stay tuned for that. We're going to we're going to do something cool and we're going to involve all of our retail partners such as yourself and get some people involved and do some do some fun things. So, uh, uh, I'm excited. Awesome. Well, Rich, Rich, it's been awesome having you. Tell people where they can find you online. So, if you're anywhere. Can, yeah. <laughs> So if you're looking for Fergalicious, uh, we're on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook under Fergalicious Barbecue. Um, we also have a website, fergaliciousbarbecue.com, uh, or our store, K uh, KC Grilling Company. We're on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and at kcgrillingco.com. So we're also, uh, you know, one of the OGs of the Barbecue League. I've got some vids on there. Hey, is Marcy in here? Hey, Marcy. Luke <laughs> asked me a, a funny question that says, "What's one? what was the question again, Luke? What's an unusual habit or an absurd thing that you love? He wants to see your tattoo. Oh, no. 
Oh, no, she said she doesn't want to be on camera. Oh, I've already seen it. Well, we don't do anything with the video. Oh. I just I just oh. want to say I'm, I'm sorry, you poor woman, that you have that on you. <laughs> he says they don't do anything with the video, so you can show him. Oh, my gosh. And they're matching wow. flames, dude. The same way. Wow, plane. I'm looking at Mrs. Fergalicious's tattoo. <laughs> and, and she's smiling, folks. She's not sad about it. She's smiling. <laughs> So Ferg doesn't have any unusual habits or certain things that he loves. See, see, I, I can't can, think of any unusual ones. I no. could, he said his he, he said his is buying underwear for people. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. It's weird. <laughs> the only thing I can think of is that he loves spicy food and it always, always, always gives him a stomach ache. So he's a glutton for punishment. <laughs> well, there's I mean, that's a good one. I guess if you call that weird, yeah. I mean. I do love spicy food. It always, it always uh, jacks Cheers me up, up but, but I still do it anyways. It's like, <laughs> yep, I love spicy food, man. That's and cool. Then, and, Mal- and Malcolm Reed this weekend was, you know, what I loved about him was I'm in his hometown and he did not say, let's go eat barbecue, which I, I said to him immediately. Like, he goes, let's go eat tacos, Ferg. And I'm like, Malcolm, you and I are going to be really good friends because right. when, when a barbecue dude says, let's go eat tacos, that means it's going to be good. And then we got there and it was, he we got we had some spice and we got we got lit up a little bit um with some spicy sauces but it was right. good, fun it was good yeah you know it's it's one of those things and I'm going to bring this up now too because why not you know you go to these new towns and uh, you see friends and they're like there's a great barbecue restaurant in town and you're <laughs> like no man no I don't want to go there <laughs> <laughs> take me to the best sushi restaurant in town <laughs> <laughs> there you go or well, tacos let's do that let's do tacos. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, Hernando, Mississippi, there's a lot of there's a lot of taco and Mexican restaurants there. And yeah. uh, and I got to, you know, I got to try a couple of them and uh, they were very good. And and uh, but we, we got a little it got a little spicy. So but right I, don't that. I always like to try that. So. <laughs> well, cool, man. Well, I just want to thank you for being on here and. I've, it's been fun getting to know you and hope we can, we can see each other. It's been a while. So it'd be great to, I think I'm going to get out to Kansas city here sometime this summer. Uh, so hopefully we can hang out and do some stuff, check out the store. Well, let's uh, when you know, you're going to come out, let's hook up. We'll film some content at the store. We'll do a recipe or something cool. together. That sounds awesome, man. Maybe for the barbecue league or something like that. All right, cool. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks a lot for Tell Kim. I said, hi. Will do. Thank you for listening to Pitmaster, an old Virginia Smoke podcast. Be sure to subscribe and like the podcast, rate the podcast, and to share it out with your friends. Also, be sure to check out the old Virginia Smoke YouTube channel as well. Next week kicks off National Barbecue Month. We have some fantastic episodes ready for you, and we'll kick off the month with Mark Lambert from Sweet Swine of Mine. For companies interested in advertising, please contact Old Virginia Smoke directly via www.oldvirginiasmoke.com. Pitmaster, an Old Virginia Smoke podcast, is edited by Chris Sedenka. Pitmaster, an Old Virginia Smoke podcast, is a property of Old Virginia Smoke, LLC. All rights reserved. Copyright 2021. Old Virginia Smoke.